What's good? It's truck time, and this is the Sierra 1500. Now we've driven two of these 1500s since they were brand new for the 2019 model year. Both of them had the biggest gas engine. Today, I'm driving the one with the biggest and the only diesel engine, but this is no ordinary Sierra. It's the Sierra 1500 AT4 Carbon Pro Duramax Turbo Diesel. The AT4 is the fun version. It's sitting on a lift kit on these big mud tires and with the diesel engine, it lets you scoot away from traffic lights and get up to 26 MPG highway. Really, really good. I'm also gonna show you a lot of cool features that make living with a Sierra 1500 really useful on a day-to-day -day basis. We're car gurus, but we're also truck gurus. So check us out and subscribe because we drive everything. The unusual thing that no one talks about is the name. I drive a General Motors Corporation. Now, we don't really say that, and everyone's so used to GMC, we never spell it out. And really, all it is is a Chevy with a special front end. Almost. Only the Sierra has a carbon fiber bed. That's an option that saves 100 pounds versus the regular steel box. It's also roomier, and it's tougher from the start, because it comes like this. You don't have to have a spray-in or drop-in liner. And check this out. It's molded back here to fit motorcycle tires. This carbon bed is only an option on the Sierra AT4 or the Denali. Now, you can't get that on the Silverado Trail Boss, but while these vehicles are kind of the same, this one also has the diesel. You can't get that on the Chevy. There's a two inch lift with special off-road shocks, exposed tow hooks, and Goodyear all-terrain tires. I would not recommend ordering this metal sidestep. It's awkwardly short, and the truck is very high. It's almost 11 inches off the ground. This truck has the short bed, which is six feet. You can also order the standard bed, which is six and a half. Now the AT4 only comes as a crew cab. On the other Sierra models, you can get the smaller double cab with the standard bed, or you can get the single cab, which has the biggest one of all, the long bed. That's over eight feet. Why am I still at the rear? Well, there's just too many fun things, that's why. Like this. That. This. A little bit of that, too. And right here in the tailgate is an integrated Bluetooth speaker. Because there's moments like this where I really just like to unwind with my GMC, sitting back here, everything just fades away. And there's this. For the most graceful exits. One more time at the front. These lights are bold and blocky. Otherwise, this is a basic looking truck, especially in white. There's nothing fancy going on, not like the glitzy Denali, but the AT4 is a handsome guy. Oof. A lot of torque, 460 pound feet. That's just as much as the 6.2 liter gas V8. And this is a three liter six. It's an inline six. This is one of the smoothest diesels I've driven. And I've driven the Rams and the Jeeps, right? That's a three liter V6. It sounds like a UPS truck in comparison to the GMC, because this thing is just, it's quiet. Not much vibration. And remember, you really can't get too many diesels in the light duty segment. So the fact that they paired it, especially on this AT4 trim, it's great. It actually does sound good too. Remember, I'm talking about a diesel. Diesels are always clattering and sputtering and just letting every single piece of vibration come through into your entire body. Not this one. This really, you could have fooled me in thinking that this was gas, especially at speed, because it just does not drive like the diesels of just a few years ago. Really great. The biggest thing about the diesel is the torque not even just the towing, and I'll get to that in a bit, it's the fuel economy. You can get up to 30 MPG highway on the two-wheel drive version of the Sierra. In this four-wheel drive AT4, it's still 26 highway and 22 city. I've been averaging on here at over 23, which to be honest is more than I can get in a sports car. And the fact that I'm in a giant truck that's lifted almost 11 inches off the ground on very knobby all-terrain tires, pretty spectacular. And the tank is so big that you can get over 600 miles in one shot. Like, it's just, it's incredible. It really is. The Sierra has five engines. This diesel, 
a 2.7 liter turbo four, which actually has a lot of power and torque, a 4.3 liter V6, still pretty decent, 5.3 liter V8, and the 6.2 liter V8. So, so many choices depending on what you need to tow, how fast you need to go, right? The diesel isn't even the highest tow rating. For 2021, they've upped it to about 1,900 extra pounds. The four cylinder is over another ton of towing capacity. The GMC says that they realized that the axle on this diesel and the cooling system on the four, they were a lot more durable than they expected. So they actually underrated those trims for 2020. And now, because they realize, hey, everything works, now these numbers are really large. So if you see those differences when you're shopping, that's the only reason why. Both vehicles technically can do it, but 2021, they're just rated a lot higher. Now, all of those engines pair with different transmissions. You got six, eight, or 10 gears. And on this diesel, it's the full 10 speed, and it shifts really well. And I think that's a big contributor to fuel economy. Max towing on the Sierra 1500 is 11,800 pounds. You have to check all the right boxes on that one. However, the diesel is still not the champ, right? The Ram 1500 with a diesel beats this by about almost one and three quarter tons. So if you're looking for max towing, you're not gonna get it with this GMC. However, if you want kind of the best balance of both payload and towing, you should get the 5.3 liter V8 with the eight speed automatic. Those will get you the best numbers, almost 11,000 pounds towing and over a ton in the bed. So get that one if that's the best of all worlds for you. What I find funny about driving this truck is that there's actually a sport mode. Not really sure why they put that in here. I'll activate it. Do, do, do. I mean, does anything really change? <laughs> not really. A diesel is just not a sporty engine, but it's there. There's also a towing mode as well. And if you have the two-wheel drive models, there's a snow mode, so it changes some of the throttle and, and the four-wheel drive characteristics. This one actually will automatically engage four-wheel drive, which a lot of other pickups won't do. So that's kind of nice. But in general, if you really do need four-wheel drive, you should engage it first, because by the time that activates, it may be too late and you're already slipping and you're in a bad situation. So just be aware of that. But the AT4 has a low range transfer case, so you can kind of climb through anything with this vehicle. However, one thing I have to say, it's a really stiff ride. The tread is super noisy. And just the way the steering response is and just the whole kind of, you know, a bit lethargic response of some of the handling, right? It just drives more like a heavy duty truck than a light duty truck in this configuration. The regular Sierras, especially the Nollies on those more street friendly tires, they drive more like a car. But the Ram 1500 still is the best driving pickup truck in the segment. It drives the most like a car and it's a full size truck just like this. So yeah, this just feels really, this feels like I'm driving a 2500 and it shouldn't. I'll give you guys an example. The Ram TRX, which we reviewed a few months ago, that's the extreme off-road, super fast vehicle with ultra wide off-road tires. Well, that felt more composed and civilized on the road than this vehicle. Now I understand these are not the same vehicles by any means, but just to give you an idea, that's a really extreme truck meant for sand and all sorts of essentially Baja racing. And this thing just kind of feels like it's just, again, choppy and heavy and just harder to move. Wouldn't have expected that given that, you know, the rest of the trucks these days are driving more like cars. This one just not quite so impressive. Uh, the brakes are just a little, well, they're, they're fine, but I always think brakes on trucks like this should be a lot bigger. That's all I'm gonna say. So in general, pickup trucks are just a bad idea to take off road, the full size trucks, just because they're so long and you can't really maneuver on a tight trail like where I am now without kind of, you know, reversing, driving forward, having a spotter near you. But I'm gonna try it anyway. Cause I was just here in the Subaru Outback Wilderness and we did that. And what's cool about this truck is that there are off-road cameras. I'm gonna place this here, okay. All right, so we just cleared this tree over here to my left. I mean, it rides great, I don't feel anything. Fantastic. I'm still in two-wheel drive because it's just not necessary. And we might as well just drive over this big rock just because. Heck yeah. <laughs> I know Mike probably doesn't like that, but I did.
The Sierra was brand new for 2019, and it already feels old. The screen is 8 inches, and the way the vents and trim sweep around it makes me think of an old jukebox. It's all very functional and feels durable, like this heavy column shifter and these wide switches. But for 64 grand, I expect some more style and better colors, better materials. It's rugged in here, right? But it's just kind of plain. And you can get the Sierra Denali, which steps it up a bit, but it's still very old-fashioned looking. If GMC is professional grade, I don't see it in here. And check out these rear seats. Plenty of room, they heat, USB ports. They fold upwards, so there's lots of secret storage under here. But the bigger secret, that's right here. I was looking for this. Huh. Check that out. And the tech is very good, even though the screen looks very small. The camera views are incredible. Clear, high res, and you can put more cameras on the back of your trailer and even inside a camper. It's amazing. 15 views total. For 2021, these views get better. The guidelines, an indicator for the trailer angle, even an alert if you're about to jackknife. Combine that with a trailer app that monitors tire pressure, maintenance, and lighting. It's great, but it can't reverse the trailer automatically like Ford. Also new for 2021, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. The system is simple and fast, does everything you need, including auto-cooling the seats on a remote start. And those seats vibrate alerts if you're approaching another vehicle or object. And all the latest safety features are there, but they're optional. So is this central display on the instrument panel and the massive head-up display. Now, for anyone who prefers analog controls with just a hint of digital, this is your truck. Starting price on the AT4 is 56,395. This one is 64,430 with destination, and that includes the diesel option, which is only 995. That is a pretty significant savings over lots of other diesel pickups that charge thousands of dollars more. Because there's a lot of exhaust emissions equipment to clean it all up, that's actually a good value. The regular Sierra starts around $32,000. It's right in line with competitors, and you can spec a Sierra any way you want. The GMC Sierra does everything it says. It's straightforward and it's very capable. I think Ram and Ford do a much better job on electronics, particularly the screens and the infotainment. And the cabin, that's just average at best. But there's a lot of mechanical goodness going on here, particularly the engine, the transmission, the bed, and all the little details every day that make driving it so much easier than other trucks, including towing with it. But what do you guys think? GMC, Chevy, Ford, Nissan, Toyota? What do you want? And if you think we're done reviewing trucks, check out our other video with this truck versus the brand new Ford F-150. So subscribe, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.